In episode one of my journey on the Camino de Santiago, I set off from St. Jean and began my trek through the Pyrenees. The scenery was absolutely breathtaking, but walking for hours with a heavy backpack took its toll. By the end of day three, I could feel blisters starting to form. I wasn't totally confident that I was ready for more, but I still kept going, determined. I was headed straight into one of Spain's most intense, record-breaking heat waves, pushing me to the brink of my limits. getting going on another day today. Uh, it is so beautiful this morning. I started earlier at 7 a.m. today and I'm so glad because it's so much cooler than it was yesterday. Today I walk from Puente La Reña to Estella and it'll be about another, I think it's like 14 or 15 miles, maybe 13 if I'm lucky, but I think it'll go so much smoother because I am getting an early start, but I do have to get going here soon, <laughs> otherwise it'll get hot very fast. So here we go. through a town and fortunately I found an open pharmacy that's one thing that I totally forgot when coming to Spain is that if you need to get a pharmacy usually they're closed Saturdays sometimes Sundays as well you can really only get band-aids and like antibiotic ointment and things at a pharmacy, not like a market. But the great thing is, is you can actually speak to the pharmacist there and they'll look at you. So I got some antibiotic ointment and some band-aids. So I'm feeling a whole lot better. I love the tennis shoes that I brought. I really think that they are the best. They have so much great cushioning for impact, but I think I made a mistake and I, got a pair that was exactly my size instead of half a size up. So if I were to do this again, I would get a size slightly bigger. So that was a mistake because when you walk, your feet swell and that makes, you know, your toes rub up against the shoe. Lessons learned along the Camino. It is almost noon. I've gone seven and a half miles. I have, I think, five more miles to go, which is actually way better than yesterday. But I'm gonna start getting into the hottest parts of the day now, and see if that slows me down. Oh my God, I've been walking and it's so hot right now. And this says para los peregrinos or pilgrims and look look at this this is so sweet it's just all free all these snacks bread with garlic without garlic donation toast with olive oil look at this and this is water Ugh, amazing this is what's so beautiful about the Camino. I love it. Wow, I'm so thrilled. Two and a half kilometers left before I get to my hostel for the night. I am so hot and tired been a long one but I actually made better time than yesterday so I'm really glad for that it's just like today's temperature has been hotter and it, this is this is tough we're going through a heat wave right now and I don't know how long it's gonna last each place I go to might have a little bit different weather so it's like 
a little bit hard to for me to guess I have to look up the weather in each place but pretty much the whole region is like just hot we're talking like 95 degrees Fahrenheit on some days it'll reach 100 degrees by three o'clock leaving early is so important right now because it just gets so hot by the middle of the day and then also it means it's really important to walk kind of quickly like as as quickly as you can with as few stops as possible you know of course I do stop if I really need to if I really feel I'm feeling like shaky or something then I'll stop and eat something make sure you drink some more water so it's worth it to stop you know to like refuel but I try to I'm trying to stop as little as possible because I think it's gonna be this way for a while When I arrived to Estella that evening, I wandered through the beautiful town, fighting a new wave of pain. Two new blisters had formed on my toes. By sheer luck, I met Alfonso, a man from Spain who, just seconds after meeting me, sat me down, popped my blisters, and bandaged them up. I was so grateful for his help. He invited me to walk together with him and his friend Mario the following morning. And so, the three of us set off for the day, catching a breathtaking sunrise and stopping by La Frioja de Ayegui, a small blacksmith shop run by artisan Jesus Angel Alcoz since the 1960s. We also stopped at the famous wine fountain at the Monasterio de Irache. You can get your fill of free red wine here, although be careful, I had one sip and quickly found out it's pretty strong. Despite the scorching heat that day, I was having a great time getting to know my new friends who only spoke Spanish. It was perfect since I was hoping to improve my Spanish skills along the Camino. Hola! <sighs> a rest stop. We just made it to a rest stop. Now time for a Coca-Cola. The landscape of the Camino had already changed dramatically from prior days. The path was uncovered in direct sunlight nearly the entire way. That day, the temperature reached well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We stopped at nearly every opportunity to refuel on cold water and food. Instead of stopping in Los Arcos, the most common and also crowded town to stay the night in, we walked four and a half more miles to make it to San Sol. The next day, we woke up before sunrise and headed out as the sun rose over the rolling hills of the Rioja wine region. It felt like I was walking through a living postcard. Each step revealed a new vista more breathtaking than the last. Wow. Que bonita. Okay, today we are going to Logroño the wine country and these racks basically mean you leave a rack and you like leave your troubles behind. It's a great meaning. I like it a lot. Today we go from San Sol to Longroño, which is the wine country we'll be officially in Rioja, part of Spain that's known for its amazing wine, and I'm so excited. I'm taking two nights to rest there, uh, which will be well deserved after all this walking. It's been very fast paced. It's like you wake up at 6.30, you start walking, and then you leave, you survive through the walk which takes at least six hours if you're lucky sometimes longer because you want to stop when it gets really hot and there's uphill and downhill but essentially when you finally get there to your albergue or where you're staying you need to do the laundry you need to feed yourself make sure you're hydrated and then you have a little bit of time to relax, maybe an hour, and then you do it all again the next day. So I'm so excited to do my two days rest uh, and then continue on from there. It's been going great so far. I'm really getting into the rhythm of walking so much, happy. It's just, it feels very powerful to like slow down your pace. Even I look at cars now and I'm like, 
that car is going so fast. Like, I can't believe how fast that car is going. My perspective is shifted into like the walking, the pace of walking. So that's what I've been noticing. And I've been practicing my Spanish a lot these last two days. So that's been nice. Okay, more later. <laughs> Listos? Okay. You can actually eat these. They're blackberries or moras in Spanish. You can just pick them right off the Camino. I've seen them the whole way. I was really afraid to eat them at first because I was like, I don't want to die eating berries. All right, so we stopped in Viana for a little break. Had a glass of wine, which was so nice. We are headed to Longroño, which is known for its wine, and I'm so excited. Hi, guys. Hi. There's my friends, um, the two brothers. I met these two brothers, uh, Mark and uh, Bruce, and um, they're so great. It, that's the thing that's so beautiful about the Camino is you start seeing uh, some familiar faces like you meet people at a certain point and then later down the line you like encounter them again because pretty much everyone goes at roughly the same pace and it starts to feel like a family and I love that a lot. So right now we're just taking a lot of breaks because we're getting into the afternoon and it's really hot again so um, this will be a hard nine kilometers but we're ready. I have a lot of water and I think it'll go well and then I will have two nights rest in Logroño. So I definitely think that you could spend uh, the night in Viana as well because the stretch from Los Arcos to uh, Logroño is really far. It's like 20 miles long. So what we did is instead we went a little further yesterday and stayed in San Sol. And then from San Sol we're going to Longroño. So it's um, still a long day but it's less than if we went from Los Arcos to Longroño. Um, another option you could do is go from Los Arcos to Viana uh, which looked really charming. Uh, that looked like it's such a great town. So there's definitely different places that you can stay along the way. You don't have to stay at the biggest spots. I didn't know it then, but I would spend my entire rest day in bed, sick with a fever. It turned out one of my blisters had started bleeding and looked pretty bad. I was also pretty dehydrated. I felt so weak I could barely walk. I didn't want to drink or eat anything. Even a cafe con leche sounded terrible. Things got worse when I realized I had lost my external hard drive somewhere along the Camino the day before. Fortunately, Alfonso and Mario worked their magic and called nearly every albergue until finally they found my hard drive one town away. I was so lucky to have new friends who took care of me like family. For me, it was difficult to receive help from people whom I had just met and who owed me nothing. I wanted so badly to find a way to give their kindness back. From Longroño, the three of us parted ways. The next day, since I was still recovering, I took the bus instead of walking to Navarrete. Alfonso continued walking on the Camino and Mario returned home. I just got off the bus, I had a very short walk here, I just made it to the albergue. And uh, I'll check in. Today was by far the easiest day of the Camino because I did not walk. But I am very grateful and ready for a little more rest. So this will be good. I'm here in my room in my albergue in Navarrete. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you kind of a good example of what your typical private room looks like um, on the Camino. 
So I got a private room with a private attached bathroom. And this costs about 55 euro. Go ahead and take a look. So this one has two beds instead of one. Sometimes there's just one. Nice little closet, beautiful window with a view. My backpack, a mirror, there's even a little TV, which I won't be using, but that's nice. And here is the bathroom. So lots of space, actually. This is a luxury. Quite honestly, when you're on the Camino, if you stay in the shared dorm rooms in the albergues, you could be sleeping with up to like, you know, even a room full of a hundred people, honestly. I haven't slept in a room full of a hundred people. The most I've slept in a room so far has been, I don't know, maybe seven or eight other people. And that doesn't bother me. It's just the issue is the snoring. And just if people come in late um, or if you want to go to bed early and people come in later than your bedtime, that's when the issue comes into play. You get woken up or also for this Camino, it's been really hot. So I'll want to wear as little as possible, but I'll be in a room full of guys. So that's not always ideal. Also, it's just not always ideal just to be in a hot room, period, where there's might be no fan, no AC, and your windows, usually they let you open them. Open them. But I heard one story, um, someone was telling me where they wouldn't let them open their windows at night. So if you get uh, a place at an albergue in a mixed dormitory, um, you could be paying as little as 15 euro, which is such a great deal. But just keep in mind, you do sacrifice some of those comforts. Stay tuned for the next video in my Camino de Santiago series coming next week. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching and buen camino!